have friends on the religious right who support decreasing medical benefits, housing benefits, and education for many who cannot afford it themselves. Referring to actions in Congress, how to respond to this from a Jesus perspective, and the other one is, there seems to be a growing hostility toward the poor in the United States. Often the Christian church seems to allow, if not to endorse these feelings. How can Christians change the debate about poverty in America? Here's the bishop. <laughs> Oh, Jesus was very clear that he liked the poor best. And in fact, the God of, of Old and New Testament is very clear that he has what some theologians have called a preferential option for the poor. We may not like the sound of that because we don't think it's fair for God to like some people more than others. But the God that we know in Scripture, in fact, likes the poor more perhaps because they are so dependent on God that they don't, they don't play around with pretending that they are autonomous either from God or from each other. Yep. There's a wonderful um, little piece in an early Christian writing called The Shepherd of Hermas, where um, it's a parable about the rich and the poor, and it's a parable about the huge oak tree and the creeping vine, the uh, grapevine on the ground. And it talks about how the creeping grapevine is only able to live if it can find the tree and grow up it so that it can reach the sun. And the question is, if, the oak tr if one of those is the poor people and one is the rich, which is it? Well, you'd think that the oak tree was the rich people and the grapevine was the poor, but it's the exact opposite. They, the, the, uh, the, the rich are the ones who are tied to the earth because of their possessions and they're worried that they'll be stolen or lost. And the poor are the ones who are totally open to the presence of God. And so in this parable, the, the, the rich who are creeping along the ground find the poor and are sustained by them sustained by the poor, by their witness to the presence and the reality of God. And I'm sure all of you, have, many of you have had that experience in running across a homeless person who is asking you for money, and whether or not you give it to that person, invariably you're going to hear, God bless you. That's right. I think it's, it's exceedingly difficult but the church is going to have to find a way to talk about market ideology. We need a market. We obviously need a market. But market ideology is not about the market. It's a religious conviction about individualism and about the big ones eating the little ones. And it contradicts the gospel. And it's, it's, a, it's an awesome, scary thing to try to even raise that question in most of our churches, but it really is a primary theological question now for us because our society is by and large governed by market ideology which conducts an endless war on the poor. And the way the bishop is talking about God's preferential option for the poor, it obviously is antithetical to what the gospel has to say about the poor. And, and the other thing I thought about the vine and the oak tree, the, if the oak tree are the poor, the vine depends on cheap labor. So it's, it's not only that the poor are open to God, but they also live on very small incomes that make the wealth of the rest of us easier to come by. And, and, and that is a, that is a, an enormously important discussion that we have to be having in the church. I'm not sure how to follow you all on this, because I love you when you tell that story, and I, I, I think that, Walter, you've spent a lifetime talking about this very issue. So I guess what I would say is simply, I think often the Bible, just in everyday life, gets used as a weapon. 
and any time we use the Bible as a weapon, it's being misused. And the current people that we're using it against are the poor, but there's been a whole line of people throughout history that have gotten you know, attacked by using scripture. And so I think we have to think about how to, to move beyond seeing one another as the other, as the ones that we don't approve of. Um, and so finding a way past that, I think that can only happen by knowing someone who's different from us and by intentionally putting ourselves in the place where we come into that encounter. Um, I think that's, yes, that's for I, me. I, 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 don't, I don't think that uh, God's preferential option for the poor is an attack upon rich people. It's an attack upon the system that justifies inequality in which we are all situated whether we are rich or not. Yeah. That's I was thinking about the, the, the confession in enriching our worship is that evil that enslaves us. Yeah. So we're all enslaved in the system that is causing this, that's, that's right. causing this divide. That's right. Right. That's what I was gonna say. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. No, no. <laughs> we're not only enslaved by it though, we also are huge beneficiaries right. of it. Exactly, we're dependent upon so, it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.